natural disaster strikes with torrential rainfall and flooding and landslides cause extensive damage, especially in underdeveloped countries. Or when drought takes its toll and makes it extremely difficult to grow any crop. Or when victims of conflicts can lose everything they own in minutes and be forced to leave their homes. There's a crew with 13,000 people spread out around the world, 5,000 trucks, 30 ships and 50 aircrafts who make sure the weakest are taken care of and get enough to eat. But the refugees are fleeing war, floods are washing away homes, or dwarf is destroying famine, hunger is often the first danger. But hunger also kills beyond emergencies, its victims are more than those by HIV, malaria and tuberculosis combined. Daily undernourishment is a less visible form of hunger, caused by insufficient or wrong type of food intake, especially at an early age. It reduces physical and mental development and school attendance. Even though there's enough food to feed everybody in the world and it doesn't take more than 25 cents to feed a school child for a day, today there are just under 1 malnourished billion people in the world. That is nearly a seventh of the global population. About 21,000 people die every day of hunger or hunger-related causes, according to the United Nations. This is one person every four seconds, as you can see on this display. Sadly, it's children who die most often. To find out more about the special crews fighting hunger worldwide, let's go to its headquarters in Rome. The world's largest humanitarian agency, the WFP or World Food Program, is a voluntary founded agency part of the United Nations system. Every day it reaches the world's hungriest and most malnourished people through programs and nutrition interventions. There I met Ray Schoolerot, who's the head of photo unit at Italy HQ. He told me that the most important ingredients for successful teamwork are mutual respect and the diversity each person brings into the team. There's no difference between WFP staff and local people. So it's important that we always realize that we're always in the same team. It's one family, it's one organization. The WFP has set up many successful projects. To help a country build a better future, you need these children to be well fed and go to school. That's the aim behind the School Meal Project. A daily school meal has many and varied benefits. It's a strong incentive to send children to school and keep them there. It also allows them to focus on their studies rather than on their stomachs. Decorations encourage families to send children to school regularly. WFP also uses fortified food and micronutrient powders to ensure that children get the nourishment they need. Another WFP initiative is the Food for Work project. Workers are paid with food to start building a hunger-free future for their communities. Usually participating communities provide manpower, local government the land, and use technical assistance. And the WFP food to compensate communities for work on vital infrastructure that help the people to become food secure and self-reliant. Providing food in exchange for work makes it possible for the poor and hungry to devote time and energy to taking the first steps out of the hunger trap. Or to spend time learning new skills that will increase the food security of households or communities. The work communities undertake usually involves setting up or restoring infrastructures to cope with natural disasters to risk mitigation. Where water is a scarce resource, like in Niger, women have been provided with food from the WFP and technical support from the government to build a dam that, after sifting the sand, will contain the water that will feed the spring. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, people have worked on WFP-supported fish farming and market gathering projects. Using mud from large termite mounds, women build dikes for more community ponds. In Afghanistan, to prevent flooding, communities have worked on an integrated water management system that built terraces and check dams to slow down the force of the water preventing runoff and have planted pistachio trees, which prevents our erosion and our valuable source of income. Even during the harsh changes down winter, local communities have been working hard on the restoration of a segment of an important irrigation canal that can assure people access to water and improve their resilience to cope with disaster. All WFP projects share a green approach because environment preservation will help build resilience to climate risks, which are likely to become more and more frequent. Some of the WFP's activities include reforestation. 
planting. This is a tree planting project. They plant the little trees here and when they reach a certain height they move them and bring them into the forests. There are also energy saving projects that reduce deforestation and CO2 emissions, like the building of safe stoves out of local material. They help reduce wood consumption and can be also used with fuel briquettes made from dung and organic household waste. Providing school with safe stoves helps ensure the cost of cooking fuel is not an obstacle to school attendance. The Marie project in Ethiopia helps chronically food insecure communities. The construction of terraces and canalizing water flowing from the mountains avoids soil erosion of productive lands. While getting access to water allows the growth of veggies and fruits that can be sold to earn money. There was a last question I wanted to ask when school would be for leaving. What's the most important and moving change, both by the WFP, that you've witnessed? Um, in WFP, one of the most important changes I have seen is in the way that it brings development in field countries. One of the examples can be the Purchase for Progress initiative. What it does is it goes in countries, in the remote fields, to very, very small farmers, enables them to sell their little harvest and to join all the little harvests of the little farmers in one collection point that can clean this harvest and make the quality of the product, if it's grain, if it's maize, if it's sorghum, whatever harvest it is, raises the quality and therefore raises the market value, the amount for which you can sell the grain in the market, so the farmers earn more. This for me is extremely innovative and a real development approach that brings the people, allows them the capacity to do for themselves. Would you like to join the WFP in their efforts to end hunger? Give them a hand while having fun and increasing your knowledge. Then go to freewise.com and try the non-profit game donated to the WFP by Mr. Brin. It's available in four languages and in several subjects. Freewise is fun and addictive. For every right answer, 10 grains of rice are donated to the World Food Program to help end hunger. Thousands of free rice players have fed millions of people since the game was launched in October 2007. Who wants to have a go? What are you waiting for then? Hurry up, let's go and play it! If we all do a little, we can achieve a lot. And fulfill a dream.